Deck presents... Unsurprisingly, the Fallout franchise is peppered with depraved individuals, not above committing war crimes. Slavery. I'm a slave? How did this happen? Or even casual cannibalism. Who needs utensils, right, Mum? Or napkins, for that matter. But all of these morally reprehensible acts pale in comparison to the idea of child killing. And although murdering minors was later censored in subsequent titles, there lingered a rumor that one unsavory quest in Fallout New Vegas had the player not only locate a child murderer, but also join him on his endeavor. But is there any truth to this dark rumor? Well, today we will explore the taboo origins and history of Fallout New Vegas' rumored child killer quest. So you ever hear the Lone Wolf radio station? Nope. Yeah, well, it used to be this local radio station broadcasting out of these hills. A mystery begins at the Lone Wolf Radio Shack near the town of Good Springs in Fallout New Vegas, which initially seems to be a point of interest, yet upon closer inspection appears to be eerily empty, perhaps too empty. A fact fans picked up on, and sometimes post-launch, rumors of a creepy pasta tale would begin to spring forth on forums online, and over time began to gain traction. The story would consistently claim the following. Originally, the location was planned to be home of the Lone Wolf, a character far more sadistic and depraved than any before featured in the Fallout franchise. Which makes sense as the game was developed by Obsidian, known for not shying away from controversial topics at the time, which we will touch on later. The so-called Wolf allegedly was planned to host the Lone Wolf radio station, which would feature insane ramblings and rants at unpredictable intervals throughout the day, until 11pm when the station would go eerily quiet. The lone wolf would then return at 3am with a child. A different child was supposedly featured every night because the lone wolf would announce on air, Everyone is gone. You're all alone. Let it all end. Before viciously murdering them live on station. Now, there's no way the franchise would delve so deep into depravity to permit child killing, right? Well, here are a few salient facts on the topic to further muddy the waters. Rumor has it he aired out of a beat-up old trailer. That thing could be hidden anywhere up here in these hills. Because of the ability to kill children, Fallout was denied release in Europe initially, but after removing all children from the game, it was allowed to release. Fallout 2 also has no children in European versions. In fact, creator of Fallout, Tim Kaine, commented on the child-killing controversy during a developer presentation in 2012, saying, We said, look, we're going to have kids in the game, you shoot them, and it's a huge penalty to karma, you're really disliked. There are places that won't sell to you, people will shoot you on sight, and we thought that people can decide what they want to do. This of course contributed to our M rating, however Europe said no. They wouldn't even sell the game if there were children in the game. We didn't have time to rewrite all the quests, we just deleted kids off the disc. Hey Jimmy, are you tired of bullies pushing you around? Boy am I! What if you could get rid of them forever? Artist Brian Menz, who created the infamous child killer perk image for Fallout 2 at Black Isle Studio, went on record to say, This image was unused and the only Vault Boy image to ever be cut from Fallout 2. I'm sure you can figure out why. I remember when I got the request to do a perk illustration for child killer, that there would be no way to keep it in from being offensive. I mean, really. How do you make an illustration of child killer and keep it from being offensive? Anyway, for some reason I thought this was the least offensive way to do it. I have no idea what I was thinking. Even the designer who requested it realized it was a bad idea. So we fixed it and looking back now, I can't believe I drew this. The perk was later replaced with the tamer hated image. Boy, thanks mister. Careful there sport. The Batman Tactical Nuclear Catapult. 
Enlist now and demo one today. When Black Isle Studio sold the Fallout franchise to Bethesda, lead designer Emil Paglia Rulu explained the decision that they too would not harm miners to Edge Online, saying, We began to think, really, what benefit would there be in killing kids, he says. It just seems gratuitous, unnecessary, and cruel. Though fans didn't seem to think so after meeting Betty in the Gek, as Fallout 3's Killable Children mod was released in 2008 and has over 150,000 downloads. And before you say, <laughs> Good on you, Bethesda. Remember, Fallout 3 was released in 2008. However, notably baked into Skyrim, which released three years later in 2011, was the sound files of, you guessed it, children's death screams. Although eventually removed, it's clear the Tamer Elder Scrolls franchise was also toying with the idea, which again inevitably made it infinitely easier for modders to create an unparalleled sense of immersion while casually stalking down some orphaned street urchins. I'm so sorry for saying that sentence. It should finally be noted that Black Isle Studios, who created Fallout 1 and 2, and was working on Fallout 3 Van Buren before its closure, would return, in a way. After Bethesda's success of Fallout 3, they had Obsidian Entertainment, a company largely comprised of ex-Black Isle heads, create New Vegas. Hence why New Vegas thematically returned to its darker roots and more complex themes. To further add to the mystery, there was even a mod called Simply Uncut, which aimed to restore the supposed quest as well as others cut from the final game. I mean, there was even a rapist who had a flamethrower and would burn all of his victims called Cook Cook, who still appears in game just with a lot of his content cut. If I had to guess, it's because I cook shit for the rest of the game. I'm a good cook, maybe I'll make you dinner sometime. However, specifically with the Simply Uncut mod, there was community backlash and there was no children involved, plus the quest was removed as being listed as official cut content as its validity remained somewhat dubious. However, I did manage to dig up two official statements on the contested quest that puts the mystery to bed. The first being location designer Dinny McMurray, who commented on the inspiration for the location of Lone Wolf Radio Station, saying, The inspiration from it came from when I was at the University of Oregon. Now, every Saturday, there was a guy who stood on a corner of the campus where everyone walked by. He had a personal microphone and a speaker who would just babble on and on about one government conspiracy or the other. The Radio Shack was what I imagined he would have put together if he upgraded from travel speaker to pirate radio. The second and most damning piece of evidence is from New Vegas lead designer Josh Sawyer during an Obsidian charity livestream in which he directly commented. Yeah, what's your opinion on the Fallout creepypasta like Lone Wolf Radio? It's completely made up. <laughs> like all that stuff about Lone Wolf Radio is completely made up. I have no idea where people got that idea from. I think someone just made it up. So I guess that puts an end to the creepy pasta. Or do you believe PR wanted it swept under the rug? That's it for the video. As always, thanks for watching and like and subscribe for more dark lore.